Hi, um, I'm Fanny Mlynarski, president of Octoscope. So this is a rough agenda for today. We'll start with uh, Wi-Fi 6 testing, and then we'll, uh, we'll do a deep dive into uh, insights into OFDMA and uh, do a standards update on the IEEE Wi-Fi Alliance and Broadband Forum standards. So the test bed that we're using today is our brand new test bed. It has uh, 32 stay pals. Stay pals are instruments uh, that uh, we use, uh, and you can see kind of a busy diagram. There are 16 of them on the right and 16 on the left, and they all connect into four pairs of antennas. And these four pairs of antennas are spatially diverse. They're in the corners of the chamber. What that means is we can form a complex beam from the access point. So at the same time, we're testing OFDMA with this number of stations. We can also do multi-user MIMO, and we can have up to four of them together on the air link on four different beams. And so we will be showing some of these tests live. Our speakers today are our, our CTO, Lee Chinitz, and Steve Shear, chief scientist. They will tag team on, on the first part of the, uh, the seminar with all the testing, live testing, and deep dive into OFDMA. Uh, then we have Prachi. Samba Kuar, uh, she's our uh, local San Jose-based uh, systems engineer, and she also happens to be a resident expert on the Wi-Fi Alliance testbed, which she'll tell you about. Uh, some of our guest speakers are Craig Smith, who's principal of Dot11 Labs. All of our speakers have at least 20 years of experience in this industry and going back to the pioneering days and have been involved very actively with the latest OFDMA technology. So Craig is going to show us some testing he's done in the open house and present some interesting test results, which actually correspond in some ways to what we'll do in the test bed today. And last but not least, Lincoln Lavoie, uh, who's a senior engineer at UNH IOL, and he is uh, a standards-focused uh, guy at UNH. Uh, in, and uh, he's been doing a lot of work, among other things, at the Broadband Forum, where they have a um, pass-fail test with a lot of test cases for Wi-Fi. All right, so with that, I'm going to pass it to Lee. This seminar is actually now kind of part of a series of things. Um, we actually did a first seminar on Wi-Fi 6, um, kind of an introduction to Wi-Fi 6 last year sometime. And we talked at that time a lot about like what Wi-Fi 6 is um, and what kinds of testing we thought would be necessary in order to uh, really understand what was happening. A couple months ago, uh, Tim Higgins from Small Net Builder put out an article uh, there's a link here on this slide, uh, and the, the name of the article is What's Missing from Your Wi-Fi 6 Router, or OFDMA. So um, you can kind of get the whole gist of the article from the title. Tim looked at uh, a number of devices. He's got a table in the uh, paper itself. This is the table where he tried to identify what he thought the capabilities were as far as he knew, either from talking to the vendors or researching the products, you know, what was capable in terms of uplink and downlink OFDMA. And he took data and Tim does a lot of sort of detailed work with the vendors themselves talking about what are the right test cases in order to see effects of OFDMA. He was focusing on different packet sizes. He was looking at different uh, signal levels um, and various other things. But what you can s roughly see in this picture is that there were some places where he saw some gains when he would turn OFDMA on and to OFDMA off. Um, there were other places where you would see losses and more or less he was struggling to find what the right test cases were to either see the benefits of OFDMA or OFDMA itself was not actually, you know, performing particularly well in the products. It's hard for him to say, um, you know, exactly what's going on, but that's kind of the state of the world at that time. <clears throat> so for this seminar, we're, I'd say, happy to report that, you know, part of the reason we want to do this now is that even in the short space of time since Small Net Builder put out that article, we're starting to see what we're calling signs of life in terms of OFDMA. We have spent a lot of time, uh, obviously, as a company whose focus is test on figuring out what the right test cases are and what the right test scenarios are in order to actually 
uh, sort of quantify benefits of OFDMA. And that has taken us down a path of needing uh, new test beds. So Fanny just introduced you to you know one there. Uh, it's been becoming more and more clear that we really do need to have uh, you know a fair number of simultaneous devices on the link in order to be able to do these tests. Um, and that pushed us in the direction of the state pals that Fanny just mentioned. We'll talk about it a lot, but you'll hear a lot about it a lot today. Um, and we also needed to really wrap our heads around the fact that the metrics for evaluating OFDMA performance are different. Um, really kind of up until now, there's been a big focus on throughput, right? Um, and we'll talk about this more as well. Um, but there's different metrics really to understand what OFDMA is doing. I guess the message for this seminar roughly is kind of buckle up because Wi-Fi 6 testing is a whole different ball game from all of the testing we've done before. So it's new test beds, new test methods. So kind of get ready for that. But I am going to do a quick introduction, by the way, to Octoscope. Um, that'll be very short. We'll dive right into Wi-Fi 6 testing. We'll look at uh, a little more detail what I mean by the fact that it's very different from previous uh, generations of Wi-Fi testing and uh, look at at some of the, the, the features that, that we can look at, give you a sense of how these test beds work and what kind of analysis we're able to do. We'll end up with um, a quick survey of the standards uh, environment, both in terms of Wi-Fi 6 and where it's going, in terms of actually things like 6 gigahertz operation, uh, the newer technologies even coming afterwards, and the broadband forum as well, as we mentioned before with uh, TR398, and looking at where they're going in with their issue too, especially in terms of testing methodologies for Wi-Fi 6. Okay, quick introduction to Octoscope. Octoscope, you know, what we do, uh, our, our whole goal is to make wireless testing easy. The way we look at ourselves is we're a combination of the, the best aspects of sort of large anechoic chamber testing and open air walk testing or drive testing. Um, those have pros and cons in both of them. And what we try and do is bring together uh, the good parts of both. Uh, those being, you know, highly uh, isolated and shielded environments, but with the ability to do real world uh, emulation in terms of multipath, interference, range, that kind of things, things that are difficult to do in an anechoic chamber. And so again, from a benefit point of view, you know, the reason that, or the benefits that, that our customers get from using uh, an, octo, an octoscope test bed or an octobox as we refer to it, um, is that it's, it's easy to uh, do tests that might take you days or weeks if you were actually doing a walk test and trying to walk around and gather a bunch of data and push that down to hours. Um, because you can create repeatable uh, test cases inside the Octobox without having to walk around and, um, and gather data. Um, we're able to uh, always begin by showing the maximum performance of products because the test beds are small, the devices are close to each other. We can always start with the maximum performance and then we can emulate kind of what will happen as you take that maximum performance and begin to degrade the channel either through distance or interference or multipath or something like that. We are fairly widespread in the, uh, certainly in the Wi-Fi testing industry, kind of across uh, all kinds of different uh, aspects of that industry from uh, chipset vendors to the equipment manufacturers, operators, and test labs. The basic elements of the system is made up of a bunch of different pieces, those pieces being primarily uh, the anechoic chambers that come in multiple sizes. Uh, we have multipath emulation. We have programmable attenuators that we use for uh, creating uh, range. We have turntables that can be used for uh, averaging the results, smoothing results out, looking at results as a function of uh, orientation of the device under test. We have programmable uh, interference generation. That interference generation can be either Wi-Fi interference or non-Wi-Fi interference. And then finally, we have what we call PALs. And there's a whole bunch of them on this slide. Uh, you heard mention already today to something called a stay PAL, and I will describe that. But the PALs um, in general are our uh, Wi-Fi testing endpoints. Um, traditionally, uh, right up until the product that we're talking about today, um, they were uh, devices that could be configured either as stations or as access points. And as access points and stations, they had other functionality as well. They could be sniffers. As stations, they could be multiple virtual stations. They had all kinds of things that they could do. Um, the, the big difference with the StayPal, which is the one uh, shown in the, uh, 
on the bottom of this picture with the funny little antennas on it. Um, the difference with the State Pal is that that's our first PAL device that is designed specifically to just be a station device. It's not an access point. Uh, it can be a sniffer, but it's only a station device. And those are the ones that we're using. We're building into what we call this PAL box for this highly dense kind of OFDMA testing. The other thing to know about our test beds is that in addition to the hardware that I just you know quickly uh, flew flew past, um, there is a you know a heavy layer of software that sits over the whole thing. The entire uh, test bed runs under um, browser-based software control. You'll see that today as we run the demos. You'll see quite a lot of that today. Um, but in addition, all the devices. Uh, expose a REST-based API so the test bed can be fully automated. And traditionally, you know, our customers who use the test beds a lot tend to run more under automation than, than under the, the browser-based software control. We've also created our Python library that uses those REST APIs. So um, it's possible to build uh, scripts to run uh, all, of the, all of the test cases. Quick summary of what you're looking at. This is the test bed that we will be using today for the demos that you're seeing. What we have is uh, three chambers. Um, one of our big guys, I mentioned before, we, they come in three sizes. The one that's called Box TT, that's our largest size uh, anechoic chamber. And in there, we have our access point. Today, the access point that we're using for the testing is actually our PAL 6. It's our, our Wi-Fi 6 version of the PAL, um, but it could be anything. Uh, and on the bottom, you see those two things that are called PAL boxes. Uh, again, so those are the devices that are made up of state PALs. Uh, and as Fanny mentioned, there's 16 in each one of those PAL boxes for a total of 32 stations that are accessible by that, uh, that device under test. Those of you who are here can look at it. Those of you who are not, just in case you're interested in what that looks like, the top box with the, the PAL 6 as an access point looks like this. Um, those are the, uh, those, these um, little angular things in the corners. Those are what Fanny mentioned uh, that we have all of the devices coming in. Uh, she actually said they, uh, they're coming into four pairs of antennas. Um, that's actually true for one PAL box. The other PAL box is also coming into four pairs of antennas. There's actually eight pairs of uh, antennas in these corners. Um, and that thing in the middle is our PAL 6. It's being used in a slightly unusual mode because it's actually operating over the air. Uh, often our PALs are conducted, um, but in this case, uh, that one is over the air. So you can see the antennas uh, on there. And um, again, for those of you in the room, we have some more show and tell uh, right in front of Craig is another PAL 6 um, up on this front table with, uh, with other antennas attached to it. And then in the bottom, uh, this is what the uh, PAL box looks like. Uh, so the PAL box itself, uses our smallest uh, chamber, and it has, again, 16 stay pals in it. In this case, that chamber is not use, used then for any over-the-air testing. This is actually just a, um, uh, a self-contained test unit of 16 conducted stations. Now, there's no room in there for over-the-air testing. There's not even any antennas. So those, those 16 stations are in there and they're being conducted out uh, for use elsewhere. So think of it, if you like to, as a big pal, um, but it's actually 16 individual radios. Mm -hmm.